خيرين خل إلا مادا يا خيرين خل إلا مادا بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وأفضل الصلاة وأطيب التحيات وأتم التسليم على حبيب قلوبنا سيدنا محمد وعلى أبيه إبراهيم وعلى أخويه موسى وعيسى وبقية إخوانه من النبيين وآل كل وصحب كل أجمعين Brothers, let us start our class, insha'Allah, with salah ala Rasulillah. All of us will close our eyes, insha'Allah, and try to send your heart, your soul to Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and give him salam from your heart, insha'Allah. Keep your heart, your, your soul busy with salah alayhi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Salatu wa sallam. الصلاة والسلام عليك يا سيدي يا رسول الله الصلاة والسلام عليك يا سيدي يا رسول الله بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين. We started last week this hadith in Bukhari and I mentioned about this tabi'i. Abi Jamra, who used to be as a friend with Ibn Abbas. And just we will do a quick recap for all the information that we mentioned last week. I said, this Abi Jamra, he used to speak a Persian language as well. And he used to translate it or translate some informations some knowledge from Persian to Arabic for Ibn Abbas. Ibn Abbas said to him, would you like to stay with me? And I will give you something from my properties. I said last week, this is what we should try the best to practice this knowledge when we make our scholars the, you can say, the up hand, not down. Unfortunately, our scholars always down. Try the best, brothers. Alhamdulillah, in this center, Allah bless all the committee and all the brothers who share in this center. How nice when the student see their teacher give them, not take from them. How nice when the student see the teacher doesn't care for their fees or their money, but care for their faith and their heart and their knowledge. Big difference, brothers, between these two ways. Unfortunately, when they decide to destroy the nation of Rasulullah, one of the main thing to destroy this nation, destroy the the idea about the scholars in the nation of Rasulullah. Muslim people now, I'm talking about Muslim people, they look at their shuyukh with wrong way, with bad idea. If you say to anyone, all those shuyukh, they care for money. All those shuyukh, they care. They, does that make sense? Even, I don't, I will not say no, not all of them. 
Some people, they have this mentality. Some people, they, they keep themselves as a big scholars for dunya. But one day, Allah will ask everyone about his intention. And other idea, brothers, nowadays, if you focus, go to any center. Unfortunately, I see that in the Europe countries, the massage it like business, like business. Trust me, many brothers, they say, Sheikh, come, I'm ready to open center for you. Wallahi. Sheikh, but we need some good area because we need on Friday to keep the center full and to, subhanAllah. Wa anna al-masajida lillah. These houses, these centers should be for the sake of Allah. فَلَا تَدْعُوا مَعَ اللَّهِ أَحَدًا Don't make it for business. Don't make it for show. Keep that for the sake of Allah. So Ibn Abbas gave us this idea when he said to his students, stay with me, I will give you. I will make you rich. I will give you knowledge in dunya and knowledge in akhirah. Power in dunya and power in akhirah. This hadith, brothers, more than 1,400 years. If this student didn't meet Ibn Abbas, can we remember him? Who make us to remember this man, Abi Jamra? When he met the proper sheikh, proper teacher, and this proper teacher has strong faith with sincerely at that time we remember Abi Jamra after 1400 years look at us now if someone follow Imam Ahmad Rifa'i he will say I am from the followers of Ahmad Rifa'i Ahmad Rifa'i more than 1000 years passed away Sheikh Ahmad Abdul Qadir Jailani does that make sense? <coughs> many scholars passed away many years and we feel proud of them because I follow their ways. Does that make sense? <coughs> so when you have good teacher, trust me brothers, we should prepare these good teachers in, in our center. I will not talk for the nation. I'm talking for ourselves. Especially this group. Come to put this intention in our heart. Ask yourself, what shall I do? Maybe you are busy. Maybe you have family. Maybe you have a lot of work in, in your life. But you can share. Maybe you share with ideas. Maybe you share with your time. Maybe you share with your power. Not everything money. One of parents, every Sunday, <coughs> used to bring juice to student on the Sunday class. He used to bring juice, sometimes bring basket for the children. Those children are happy. Trust me, Allah will not forget this, this charity. Some of you used to bring the paper for printer. Share this paper for printer. Can you imagine, brother, every single letter on this paper, he get good deeds? Today, I give the student, 12 students, 24 papers. Full, every two papers contain eight hadith of a Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How many good deeds that person who gave these papers for masjid get with this action? Maybe he is sleeping at his home. Today he is sleeping Sunday, but the good deeds come to his account. This brother who shared with this light, maybe some of them passed away, but the reward continues till the day of judgment, till this masjid in this dunya and this light in this dunya, Allah will give them same reward. This is what I want to share with you brothers. I'm not thinking just for money. 
you can't help with, maybe with advice. Maybe with advice. Maybe, Sheikh, I have free time after 10 o'clock. I have one hour. Shall I come to tidy the masjid and clean the masjid? After 10 o'clock, shall I come? Come, Bismillah, share. Some ladies, they come to masjid. I said to them, this window, we should clean this window. Come to share when you clean this window. Since you take the dust from this window, all the bad, the bad deeds, Allah clean from your account. This is the real Islam and this is the real knowledge, brothers. It's not enough. I will come, I will attend, I will wear this hat, I will wear jubba, and sometime I'll get this beer. What did you share for the nation, for your group? Oh, nothing. No. Come to do something and keep that between you and Allah. I will not do that for the sake of Sheikh Fadi. I, I love this Sheikh. I will do that for him, not for me. Me and you will do everything for the sake of Allah. Don't come to class because I love this sheikh. No. You love me for the sake of Allah. I will come here to take some ideas and practice these ideas in my life. This is what we should understand from Ahadith brothers. And this Sayyidina Ibn Abbas, the best teacher brothers, Wallahi, who this other hadith, Sahaba said, Ya Rasulullah, could you recommend us which the best person to make him as a friend? Or who is the best people to make them as a friend? Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said, the best one who is, if you sit with him, he will help you to remember Allah. If you sit with him, he will encourage you to be close to Allah. If you sit with him, always he, he give you some knowledge to make you the best in your religion. Those are the best friends in our life. It's not the best friend who will take me to cafe, who will go to play with me some sport, who will sit with me to waste the time to talk for something in dunya. It's not the best friend who is the best partner. MashaAllah, he's very clever in dunya. He's my best partner. He helped me to, to improve my dunya. What about your heart, your faith? So Ibn Abbas encouraged that man, come sit with me. And this man, with this meeting with Ibn Abbas, Allah make him famous. Allah wrote his name in the Bukhari. And this man already take knowledge from Ibn Abbas. Ibn Abbas taught him, this is the best teacher, brother. When you go home, when you go home, brothers, don't sit silent. How was your class? Good. Okay, how was your class? Good, nice. I'm not asking you to say good or nice. Tell me what did you learn? Share with us, give us idea, one idea. One idea. <coughs> Today, Sheikh talking about, we should, you can say, rebuild the idea about shuyukh in our heart, our soul, our mind. We should give good image about Islam. We should share with something, with my group in Masjid or in my center or with brothers in Islam. Ask yourself now, what I do? <coughs> I will ask myself, oh, Alhamdulillah, I give a class every Sunday. I will give a class here. I will. It's not enough. Wallahi, brothers, I'm not saying just in front of you because Allah is witness Allah now looks at me <coughs> you mentioned this idea did you prepare something new to do so Sabir, it's not enough I um, arranged that everything in this center try to find something new <coughs> Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu taught us the best one who will do something new every day every day every day if your days similar during this week, during this month, that means you are loser. 
If your days every day better than previous day, you are mu'min. If the next day worse than before day, Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, listen to what he said: Better if you stay in the grave to stay in this dunya. That means the death better for you from the life. Unfortunately, brothers, it's not easy to practice, but it's not hard. It's not hard. Just come to try. Me and you. I say that. Sometimes I find myself very active. Sometimes I find myself calm. I don't have this power. <clears throat> but when you have this power, don't waste this power for nothing. Do you understand me? Ibn Abbas gave this hadith to the student, the group came to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu asked them, as I said, we should ask. Like, I meet this brother, I meet this brother, I meet this brother this first time. Assalamu alaikum brother. What's your name? My name Fadi. And you, what's your name? My name Ahmed. Where are you from, brother Ahmed? Why this? Lot of question. This in Islam, we should do like this. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu did that. Min ayn al qawm? Where are you from? That group replied Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu He said, Ya Rasulullah, we are from Abdu Qais. Abdu Qais, just to know, at the time of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu there is not the name of areas. Like we say here, Coventry, uh, Charles Road, Five Ways, City Centre, they don't have like this. They have the name of tribes. Do you understand me? Tribes of Mudar, tribes of Rabi'ah, tribes of Aus, tribes of Khazraj, tribes of Abdu Qais. Do you understand me? So they give the name of tribe or group. They don't have the name of area because they used to live every tribe in special area. You find this tribe, all of them as a relatives. I am sure in Syria till now, and in Bangladesh, in Pakistan, if you go to villages, you will find all the village on the same or two families. One family or two families, even these two or three families are relatives. Does that make sense? Same. So when they reply, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu <coughs> we are from Abdu Qais. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu look at this. مرحباً بالقوم غير خزايا ولا ندامة. This teach us how to how we should when you meet your friend or brother or some guest come to your home. Some people they say أهلاً وسهلاً. But Prophet Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم taught us you have to find the best words. To say that words to your guests. Like when some people come to your house, wa alaykum as salam, ahlan wa sahlan, ghayra khazayo. In Arabic language, halaltum ahlan wa nazaltum sahlan. That means you are one of my family and our house like your house. English people, they say, even English people, if someone come to you, they say in English, Make yourself at home. Make yourself at home. That means you can't think this home like your home. Does that make sense? Same Arabic language. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam chose the best, better than this sentence, Ahlan wa Sahlan. He used to say to his friend, Ahlan wa Sahlan. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, غَيْرَ خَزَايَا وَلَا نَادِمِينَ Khazaya that means, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, Welcome, O people, you are neither will be have disagrees nor will be regret. Look at this meeting. Don't worry. You're welcome. Unfortunately now, some people they meet their relatives or friends. Some people they don't like anyone come to his house. They have this mentality. They hate guests. Just to know brothers. 
when the guests come to your house, all the angels will open the door of barakat, mercy, power, everything good come to your house. And listen, the food that you feed the guest, keep some of this food. And this one of the manners I would like to share with you. When you go to any houses, brother, and they give you food, if that food too much, eat what do you want. But we should keep something for, for the people in the house. Because that food with barakah. Listen to this idea. And I will mention for all the brothers, because when I visit some brothers, to respect me, they know they have this intention. They put the spoon in the middle of the dishes or... Wait. This in the middle, barakah come inside the middle. The best way, do what Prophet Muhammad did. Take from your side, and that brother will take from his side, and the, keep the middle good. And after that, keep some of this food for the family of the, or the owner of this, uh, the families of the owner of this house. Why? Because this food has barakah. If some of them has illness of some of them, they will eat from that food. We used to get food to my Sheikh, Sheikh Rajab Deep on Ramadan. So I remember this story, Wallahi. I said, Sayyidi, please, I would like to... But Sheikh, he cannot come to every house. He said, listen, my son, my idea, who would like to help me to open fast? Bring the food to my home. We are happy. We brought the food to his house. When I came back to take the dishes or something, I found he left some food from this kind and this kind and this kind. He said, my son, go with your family, eat from this food. This food with baraka. This food with shifa. With shifa. Especially if we know someone, uh, he is pious man or pious woman, we give them a little bit of food. He will take some of this food and leave. Some people, they said, don't leave anything in that. No. Normal people, yes. But Salihin, because this food has power, has barakah, has shifa, inshallah, from Allah. Do you understand me with this idea, brothers? So, some people, they feel sad when the guests come to them. Subhanallah, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said, Man kana yu'minu billah. If you believe Allah and the day of judgment, try to treat your guest perfectly. Try to be generous with your guest. Subhanallah. This is the way of Rasulullah. Look at us now. Now people, they don't like anyone to visit them. And even if they like to call some, come to a restaurant, no one will come to my home. Come to restaurant. I will call you to restaurant to get food with me in the restaurant. And what happened in the restaurant? All of you brothers. We get food and what happened with the rest? Go to bean. This food with barakah, with power. Wallahi, yesterday I went with my friend. Some food rest. They must stop brother. I will take this food. The rest take away. When I finish, I said to other friend, take this food for you. I said to him, Wallahi, I have food in my home. If I don't have, I have food for one day. Wallahi, brothers, since I get married, I said, I don't need food in my fridge more than one day. And sometime, this happened with me, Wallahi. Sometimes some brother give me food. Brother Sabir, brother Abdul Malik, brother... I used to take this food home and we eat from that food. So the food in the fridge will be delay one day, two days, three days. My wife, she said, this is three days. Bring that food, I will eat from that food. Wallahi, even if I have the, this tiny bread or tiny food or rice or something, I collect all of them, I put them to, to this uh, birds or this uh, I forget what you call English for <coughs> Digi. Digi. 
Vigil. 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 Yes. I used to put this. One day a man <coughs> came to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu What? A man came to Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu uh, Sorry. A student came to his teacher. He said, Sayyidi, I don't know the money come to me from everywhere. And this money make me busy. Can you imagine this question? <laughs> Please make dua to me. I don't like to be busy like this. This sheikh said to the student, I'll give you this idea. When you go home, try to feed your children from old breads. All the breads will be hard. And when you eat these breads, you feel some tiny breads on the floor. Does that make sense? He said, do it. Inshallah, you will find time and this money will not disturb you. This man, after two months, his money come double. He came to his chair, he said, Sayyidi, he said, my son, did you do what I said? He said, yes. He said, what did you do? He said, Sayyidi, I give my children the old, the dry bread. But when they used to eat, I put under them like bag because I'm not ready to keep any tiny bread come on the floor. And this sheikh, he said, oh my son, when you are respect the tiny rizq, Allah give you the massive rizq. <laughs> Brothers, I see that even in our masjid. In our masjid, with all respect, this to change this to change your brother Sabir. The food in our masjid, some brother they keep for his son or for himself full uh, plate. plate. They eat some of them and they leave the meat and rice and salad and... What they do brothers, they took this in the bean. Sheikh, no one will eat from that. Why? Wallahi, I saw in my eyes in Syria, especially after the war starts, people, they look at the big bean between the rubbish to find tiny, tiny bread to eat. Can you, when, when, Allah, when I saw this, I do istighfar. I do istighfar. Wallahi, if people will not take bad image, I will say to brothers, keep that, I will clean it. But unfortunately, even if I keep that food, no one will take that food. One day I visit my friend in the restaurant, he's the owner. And a lot of food. I said, brother, what are you doing this food? He said, Allah, Sheikh, to be. Brother, he said, Sheikh, no one in, in the UK will accept to eat from that food. So my idea for everyone, I prefer who would like to eat from that plate, eat. Who find himself not ready, brother, I will keep half of this plate before I will start eating. Does that make sense? This better, brother. Wallahi, one day Allah will ask us. Allah said, وَقِفُوهُمْ فَإِنَّهُمْ مَسْؤُولُونَ Allah will ask us for that. This is what I would like to share, subhanAllah. So Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said, Ahlam bil marhaban bil wafid ghayra khazaya wa la nadimi. Listen what he said. They said, Ya Rasulullah, indeed we cannot come to you every, every week or every month. And between us and you, there is other tribes, we have trouble with them. If we decide to come to you every week or every month, maybe, We'll get fight with them. So we will keep ourselves for just Ashur Hurum. How many Ashur Hurum in our calendar? Four. four. What are those four in Muslim calendar? Remember this, brother. Dhul Qa'da, Dhul Hijjah, Muharram. These three months come consistent. Dhul Qa'da, Dhul Hijjah, Muharram. Number four, Raja. This Dil Qa'da Dil Hijjah number 11th, 12th, and Muharram number 
one, first month. This come. Then number seven, uh, Raja. During this four month, people will not fight. Even if I'm with you, with big trouble, in the month of Muharram, no fighting. So we cannot come to you just with this four months. Can you please give us some knowledge to practice this knowledge and to teach our friends in our tribe? This is what Allah mentioned in Quran. And this is what I want to share with you now. Brother, when you take knowledge, go and give this knowledge to everyone. Seriously, brother, I said this hadith last week and I will repeat this hadith this week because very important hadith. Prophet Muhammad said, Do you know who is the generous? Sahaba said, Allah wa Rasuluhu A'la. Allah and his Prophet, they know the best. Prophet Muhammad said, Allah is the generous. Allah is the ajwad. And the Prophet Muhammad said about himself, وَأَنَا أَجْوَدُ وَلَدِ آدَمِ Prophet Muhammad is the generous among the sons of Adam. And the Prophet Muhammad is the وَأَجْوَدُكُمْ مِنْ بَعْدِي The generous one after Prophet Muhammad is the generous one who من تعلم علما who get knowledge who learn something then فقام فعلمه للناس then he went back to his family to his relatives to his friend has meeting and he teach them this knowledge يحشر يوم القيامة أمة واحدة on the day of judgment this man will come as a big nation as a big nation he's one person but his reward as a big nation wallahi brothers easy wallahi this is what i love for everyone wallahi since i heard this hadith from my sheikh i didn't keep any knowledge in my heart i finished from my the class of my sheikh i came back my mom my dad my brothers, my sisters. Wallahi, even people they said, don't sit with Fadi. When you sit with Fadi, start talking about Allah and the Prophet. Wallahi, they say like this. I was happy. Yes. Do you find any subject more than important from Allah and the Prophet Muhammad? Even here, Wallahi, when the people came here, indeed when I came to the UK, no one uh, know me as a sheikh. So when I came here, the people likes to see, to talk about dunya, what I will do for the UK, or I have a plan here. No one talk about religion. When I start remind them, come to recite Quran, come to sit in this masjid, Wallahi brothers, some of them, if they have meeting or they meet each other for dinner, for something, don't call Sheikh Fadi. If Sheikh Fadi come, will make all the time religion time. Or religious time. Wallah like this. Alhamdulillah. I will keep this till the day of judgment. Allahumma ja'al. May Allah make all our times, all our seconds for the sake of Him. Trust me, this is what I like for everyone. I said now, Ya Rasulullah, who is the best friend who will always remind you to be close to Allah? who will always remind you to do dhikr, who will always give you verses, hadith, idea, good manners. It's our life. And inshallah, we'll meet each other on the court of Allah on the day of judgment. So those people, they said, can you give us, teach us something? This is what I want. Are you ready today, inshallah? Who did that last week? Who went home and teach his family or no one? Jangir, are you ready this week? Who is ready to, to promise Allah? When we finish this class, we will share these ideas with our families. What about you? <laughs> so these Sahaba say, Ya Rasulullah, Prophet Muhammad give them, look the way of Rasulullah, brothers. 
The way of Rasulullah, when he used to teach other people, he doesn't like to give them a lot of information. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi used to give them simple, easy ideas and go practice them. Do you understand? So, nowadays we need our children with one week to be scholar. One week. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to teach his friends who are the best in the world. 24 years. 14 years just to make their faith strong. 14 years. When I went to my sheikh, I need to memorize Quran within three months. Three months. I came, I prepared the first 10 pages. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahman. After one ruba, stop. Sayyidi, I memorize. Next week. Sayyidi, I come. Next week. Next week, I want to finish the juza awwal, first juza. I recite second ruba, stop. Next week. I feel sad, wallah. Sayyidi, I need to finish quickly. Next week. People, they don't accept that. Go to other sheikh. I went to my ustad, I said, why? Sheikhuna, Sheikh Rajab, why he doesn't like to? He said, no. This, when you recite just two pages, two and a half, every week, and you know I have just two and a half, I will do more practice, you will not forget this Quran, this memorization. But if you memorize Quran within three months, quickly, trust me, after six months, you will forget everything. When I give you one rubber, one rubber, I will memorize these two pages, two and a half. I have extra time. Do revision for the previous ruba. And I have more time because after 10 juzah, you need long time to revise this 10 juzah. It's not enough to memorize and forget. Memorize and forget. Does that make sense? So, this is the way of Rasulullah. He used to give his friends everything simple, easy. Prophet Muhammad وسلم, said to them, Alayhi salatu was salam. أن تؤمنوا بالله عز وجل أمرهم بالإيمان وحده You have to believe Allah and to do worship just for the sake of Allah. This worship, brothers, again and again. Shaykh, والله all of us we do worship for the sake of Allah. No. Trust me. No. I will ask you this question. When we do anything, anything, when I visit you, what I say, I visit you for the sake of Allah and when you add this and, that means this is not for the sake of Allah. I spend this money, I spend this money for masjid and because, stop, just for the sake of Allah. My relation with you, I said that many times. When I get married, I said to my wife, Wallahi, I get that for the sake of Allah. And from the beginning, I love Allah for more than myself. More than myself. So that means I love Allah more than you. When I get baby, Wallahi, I met my son, his age, three months. I get my son, first sentence, I said, Oh Allah, you are witness, I love you more than him. <laughs> my wife, little bit, this is the mentality, she is a little bit sad. He's your son, he's the first son. Even, even, we should practice this. Wallahi brothers, wallahi many times I repeat the action. Just because I said maybe this intention is not very clear for the sake of Allah. Do everything for the sake of Allah. Some, pe some people pray to make sure. Some people finish Isha prayer, go back there, and they start Sunan. Two rakah, four rakah, six rakah, eight rakah. Brother, go pray that at home. I know, I need some people to see me. I pray Qiyam. I need Sheikh Fadi to say, look, this brother pray Qiyam. If you pray for me, you are very loser. But you have to pray for the sake of Allah.
to see me, I pray two rak'ah sunnah. I go. If you want, I pray in my office, I pray in my home. Two rak'ah sunnah, not more. I, not, I will not pray for you. Even the brothers in Taraweeh, some brothers say, I will not pray for you. My prayer for the sake of Allah. You are not my judge. You are not my Lord. Does that make sense? Wallahi, brother, try to... When we practice this idea, brothers, trust me, you find yourself at that time. Again, you find yourself. You find I am Muslim. I will do this. I will feed those people for the sake of Allah. I will go with you for the sake of Allah. I love you. Wallahi, yesterday I went to pray Maghrib in Adha Center. And we have two masjid. At the masjid, we have some brothers. I went there and pray. I said to those brothers, Wallahi, I came here to see you for the sake of Allah. Wallahi, this brothers, he get his my hand. He said, Sheikh, I learned from you this idea. He did like this, Wallahi, yesterday. I learned this idea from you. When you meet anyone, you say, I love you for the sake of Allah. He did like this, like me. He said, for the sake of Allah. May Allah make all our life for the sake of him. He's our Lord, the brothers. Do you understand me with this? Inshallah. So Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi ordered them to do worship just for Allah. Nothing else. I will love you for the sake of Allah. I will treat you for the sake. I will spend my money for the sake of Allah. I will buy a car for the sake of Allah. I will buy a home for the sake of Allah. Sheikh, how that happen? I will eat for the sake of Allah. I will sleep for the sake of Allah. I will play sport for the sake of Allah. I will get married for the sake of Allah. Sayyidina Umar, he said, Wallahi, we used to force ourselves to get relation with women for the sake of Allah. And we used to do that to get children and make these children as a real believers and real scholars in the nation of in the nation of Rasulullah. Those people they understand what does mean for the sake of Allah. Do everything for the sake of Allah. And when you practice this idea, brothers, wallahi slowly, slowly, you will find yourself, you get this feeling in your heart. You find yourself sometimes if you do something and you share anything with Allah, you find this warning in your heart. Be careful. There is any partner with Allah. And you will go back. What happened? Oh, I do that because this no. Clean everything and do that for the sake of Allah. Do you understand me? Last idea, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu ordered them to do worship for Allah. And Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked them, do you know what does mean? Believe Allah and he's a prophet. He asked them, do you know what does that mean, brothers? What does that mean? I believe Allah and the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. What does that mean? No one knows. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught us, he said, if you believe Allah and you believe the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you have to pray five prayers. You have to pray five prayers. And if you believe Allah on the day of judgment, you have to pay zakah. And if you believe Allah on the day of judgment, you have to fast. And if you believe Allah on the day of judgment, you have, you have to give khumis. I said, what does khumis mean? Once 50. That means everything you get as uh, putis and uh, uh, prophets, are you ready to give some of them for the sake of Allah? When you get your salary every month, oh, my salary, Sheikh, Allah, just 500 pounds directly. I will do direct debit, 10 pounds for the sake of Allah, for this mission. 10 pounds. It is hard. Are you ready, brothers, today to do that? Me and you. Sure. 10 pounds, direct debit for the center. If not this center, other center. I don't mind. But 
we used to care for our center at the beginning. What do you think if your salary 2,000, I accept 10, 10 pounds every month. This year Allah for you. And this secret between me and you. I will not come tomorrow to Sheikh Fadi. Sheikh Fadi, I do this direct debit 10 pounds. Keep that between you and Allah. Do you understand me? Inshallah. Last idea, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Last idea, Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam taught his friends to leave everything. You will listen to this five words inshallah Prophet Muhammad sallam told them those four things are forbidden listen al-hantum wad-dubba wal-naqir wal-muzaffat other word al-muqayyar what does that mean this five words five words al-hantum to be honest Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu mentioned about this force. People at that time, they used to put the uh, wine and alcohol in these bowls or this uh, ania, what do you say, we are jug or like bucket. this? Bucket. Bucket. But this bucket, sometime from wood, sometime this dubba, and uh, sometime the people they used to save this wine and alcohol with this bucket or this uh, bowl or this uh, jug or prophet muhammad sallallahu alaihi said don't use these items why because people they used to use that in the alcohol way what does that mean brothers if this mobile phone i used to use this mobile phone for just WhatsApp, uh, YouTube, Instagram. Do you have Quran app on your mobile phone? Why use this mobile phone for something wrong? This is forbidden. I said, you said, Sheikh Fadi, now you get your car, your house for the sake of Allah. Wallahi, since I get the first car in my life, I was maybe 20. I said, oh Allah, oh Allah, when I get the key, I said, Ya Allah, you are witness this car for the sake of you. Help me to use this car just in your way. Wallahi, brothers, I used to drive. When I finished my work, evening, I used to come in front of the bus stop. If I see old man, old women, I call them, come, where would you like to go? Oh, I would like to go to this area, please. Okay, come, I will. Wallahi brothers, many times after my work I used to do like this. When I get my home, same, Ya Allah. I used just to know this idea. I mentioned that many times. You see this class? In Syria it's not allowed to do like this. You have to get maybe 100 permission from the MI5 or MI6 or MI... In Syria we have from MI1 till MI60. I'm serious. More than 20 police and MI5 and I don't know many things just to focus for Muslimin. Wallahi, I used to call the, the student to my home during the night, evening. One day, my student came before Fajr. Before Fajr, that means 2 a.m. to pray the Hajjud. In Shafi'i Madhab, it's allowed to pray Jama'ah. They came to my home and they found the police petrol or the police car wait for them. I said, what are you doing? They said, we come to Sheikh house. They said, now, what you will do in the Sheikh house? He said, we will pray. <coughs> what is the prayer now? No Fajr, no Maghrib, no Insha. They say we pray Qiyam. Now we pray Qiyam. Come, come. And Wallahi, the, the oldest one, 18 years <laughs> old. They came to me, they knocked the door. I said, yes. Those my students, I will pray Qiyam. Come to pray with us. 
والله I said like this to police uh, officer come pray with us if you want he said can I come I said, oh, welcome Bismillah we are happy he said no but please don't do that next time Wallahi lillahi alhamd next day we have same prayer and say so this is what I want you to understand try the best to make you home for the sake of Allah your car for the sake of Allah your marriage for the sake of Allah how can I do that when you get this relation with your wife not just to make this relation as an animal sorry brothers true maybe 90% of the couples they get married for for just relation to understand me relation between man and woman they don't focus I will establish now the main pillar in Islam family did you ask Allah to make this family for the sake of Allah to give you children for the sake of Allah I will treat this wife no one no one between all the Muslim and other religion did you see any two couples without problems all their life do you see that if the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, had trouble with his wives yes so please keep this idea in your head I will do this relation for the sake of Allah sometime you find your wife friend of Shaitan. She gets some advices from Shaitan and she practices this with you. Be patient. Sometime you would be friend of Shaitan. And you get some trouble and come back home to get this trouble to your family. You will ask the wife to be patient as well. When you get this relation for the sake of Allah, Wallahi, you will find your house like heaven. I will not say there is no trouble, there is no problems between man and woman no but when we love each other for the sake of Allah may Allah accept all of us and keep us on the right way Allahumma alimna ma yanfa'na wa anfa'na bima 'allamtana wa zidna 'ilman wa 'amalan mutaqabbalan ya